Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for another project. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made the cyberpunk jacket slash blazer sort of thing that I wore in my most recent lookbook. You can see this here with this silver shiny Tyvek and lots of piecing and weird color blocking going on to create this kind of spacewalk jacket meets, you know, Terry Mugler inspired blazer meets cyberpunk inspired streetwear. All throwing that all together in a blender and coming out with this rather strange jacket, but I'll show you how I put things together over on the blue patterning table of doom, as always. And here is my sketch for this buddy. So I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see kind of what I had in mind here. Uh, I just thought I would throw everything in the kitchen sink at this jacket, two different colors of twill, black and gray, and then also incorporate metallic Tyvek, black Tyvek, um, some iron on reflector material tape that I had picked up, um, possibly some buckles. I ended up leaving the buckles and straps off for this particular jacket, but I might incorporate them in another one of these in the future. So I've traced a full copy, a mirrored front copy of my front bodice pattern here. I've just mirrored that along the center front. And I'm going to go ahead and start by drawing in the style lines I want. So this is the front crossover of the front of this jacket. Obviously it's reversed from my sketch here. I never actually pay attention to what is left and right, especially when I'm pattern drafting. So um, kind of ignore that. But uh, I'm just drawing on where I want that to be. And I'm going to move the dart over five eighths of an inch so that I can have my princess seem exactly where I want it. Of course, the darts can pivot anywhere from the apex, as we know, if we've seen my dart video, that's right. So I was just pivoting that along there and then I'll just draw in a angled yoke here. I'm going to create a stripe, uh, like a striped kind of yoke here. So it's gonna be many pieces, pieces sewn together. So I'm gonna make those one and one fourth um, inches in width, just because I didn't want them to be as narrow as an inch. I just wanted a little bit thicker. Um, so I went with one and one fourth and I'm just labeling that um, cyberpunk jacket 2022 and then A, B, C, D. Label the center front, label the side front and front, label all these pieces before I can cut them apart. But basically it's just, you know, taking my basic bodice block and cutting it into the color blocks I want. Um, I'm measuring my front neckline here cause I'll need that later, but I can go ahead and cut this out. Uh, I cut that, I traced it as a full front like that mirrored so that I could make it asymmetric, of course. Here I'm just going to raise and tip up and out my tip of my shoulder seam one fourth of an inch. That's what I usually do when I want to perhaps add a shoulder pad in. Then my camera cut out, but I just cut this princess seam part aside, layered the side dart closed, and that is uh, what happened here. And I cut the waist and the side dart basically away. Um, if you've seen my princess seam video, you know what's happening here. So this is technically uh, kind of a shoulder princess at this point, but you can see how princess seams are created in my princess seam video if you would like a clearer tutorial on this particular portion of the situation. But right now I just cut this apart so I need to add seam allowance back in because this is now a style line, a princess seam style line, as opposed to having darts anymore. But I will need to sew these pieces back together and in order to do so, I will need seam allowance. So tape down my floops on the back of that like so. And then up here, this yoke piece that's cut off as well also needs seam allowance. So I need to add seam allowance to this. Of course, the yoke is still in one piece right now. I will cut it into those separate stripes in a minute. All right, like so. You can see where those darts went. The dart fullness is still sitting here in this uh, pattern. It's like inherent into the style lines now, as opposed to in actual darts that need to be sewn separately. Um, but that amount of fullness is still the same. It's just now in a princess seam because this will still fit to my body with the style line instead. So because I'm working with my basic block to start, I know this will fit, which is always nice. I didn't make a mock-up for this at all. And uh, just making sure I have seam allowance everywhere it needs to be all up in the yoke and all along the side front and front pieces where things got cut apart. I don't need to add seam allowance to the side or the um, waist because it already has seam allowance inherent in my pattern that I started with and I didn't change those at all. So it's really just three main pieces for the front that I cut apart into multiple, you know, uh, more like mosaic like pieces, but it's three main pieces as far as making the front fit me. And for the back here, I am going to again, add a yoke and then also have like a yoke flange sort of extra piece. So you'll see that as well, but I'll start with the yoke. Um, I just added a center back seam to my pattern as well. So there's a half inch along the center back. And again, I will separate this into a princess seam down the back. So I'm just going to eliminate my back dart by doing that. And then I have these chevron sort of stripes down the back of this. So I'm going to go ahead and draw those in here and uh, I will hatch mark like that on the line that I want to keep. So sometimes I'm sketching in here, but I'm trying to decide, okay, this is gonna be black, Tyvek, gray, where my stripes are going to be, where the color blocking is going to be. This, I just traced this section down here. Oh, I'm making sure that my side seam is the same height because I did lower 
the armhole a half inch in the front. So I just wanted to make sure I did that to the front as well. So I'm lining my pattern pieces up because I forgot what I did to the front. And I want to make it the same, so I need to lower it this half inch. Lower it this half inch, like so. Ease that into my armhole. Again, just adding a little bit of um, extra in my arm side for wearing this over other things because it's a jacket, not a dress. Um, so just lowering that half inch. Same with this piece that I had traced. And I'm just going to fix this. Um, you'll see when I layer this on top of the pattern where this goes. It's just an extra little yoke that I'm going to line in neon um, and it provides a little bit more extra detail and layering in the back of this jacket. Not that I needed more going on because there's about to be a lot going on in this jacket, but I'm actually thrilled with this jacket and I cannot wait to make more out of this pattern because I think it's, I mean, obviously a project like this, what it is so patchworked, it's almost like if you've ever seen a crazy quilt, um, which are these like super patchworked quilts, usually with pieces of, uh, could be from like formal dresses to rags, like anywhere in between. So a lot of different fabrics put together. Uh, this is kind of like the crazy quilt jacket in a way, because you could just save up different scraps in your sewing room from other projects to make something like this. And I might just go around and find all the cool textured black scraps of fabric in my sewing room and make another one of these in all black because as fun as the black and gray is, I want an all black version as well. And to use up scraps, it would be a good project to create something wearable out of what would otherwise be kind of like trash, you know, anyway. But I'm just going to cut my princess seam of the back apart here and then add seam allowance. Shocking, I know, like so, half inch as usual for me. And then also along the top yoke seam here, I need seam allowance. So I'll do that here as well. And the bottom of the yoke itself will need seam allowance. Anytime I cut the pattern apart, I need to sew it back together. Frankensteining the whole situation. It's going to need seam allowance. Same here for this stripe along the center back. So this little chevron stripe here is going to need seam allowance. And I will use two layers for that stripe, a layer of the Tyvek, which is a very thin plasticky material. Um, and I will cut a layer of twill to interline that with so that it's the same sort of weight as the rest of the fabric I'm using. And this little piece will fit, slot in next to the yoke as well. But I'm trying to figure out which parts of these need to be cut on silver Tyvek, which parts need to be cut on black, which part needs to be cut on gray, that kind of a thing. But now I need to go ahead and extend some of these pieces so that I can have like the peplum of the jacket or I guess the skirt of the jacket, the lower portion below the waist. And um, some of this will be with a waist seam and some of it is not. So the center front of this, I'm going to go ahead and layer onto my A-line skirt pattern. You can see I just traced the top of my front A-line skirt pattern. And I'm just going to use that as a way to extend this front piece. So I'm going to tape that on here. If you've seen some of my other videos, you anything I've done with a peplum, usually I just use the top of my A-line skirt pattern like this because it's drafted to match up with my bodice at the waist. So it's already kind of like half, half the work is done for me. I'm going to flare this out completely at the hip because an A-line skirt is not completely flared away from the hip. It still fits close to the hip for the first like 10 inches or so. Um, so I'm just going to flare that extra a little bit at the side there you can see. And uh, I do make, I get confused while I'm doing this, but this is the general shape I'm going for. But I like get confused halfway through this and have to trace a bit again, but you'll see what I mean. Uh, this just gets taped onto here. You can see where my center front is. And I need seam allowance here so that it matches up with the top. But I think, yeah, something goes haywire with that side piece that I cut off. I start getting confused. And I'm like, wait a minute, I needed to make this a half inch over. Why does the seam allowance extend? So I taped it back together, drew where I really wanted the line to be, <laughs> right there. Like so. And then my side piece was kind of confusing. So, but anyway, I'm just using the A-line skirt pattern as a base for extending my bodice into being a skirt. Um, I think I do this in my red Space Queen dress. And I do the A-line skirt. I have a whole video about that in general. So I, can, so I can link to my A-line skirt video in the description below. But I'm just tracing the side over again because for some reason I got confused. And I want that same amount of flare. So I'm putting it back on. And I just need to know <laughs> where my seam allowance needs to be for this. So I just got confused while I was doing this. But that means the footage is very confusing as well. Sorry about that. In general, this jacket, you know, is a lot more complex because I'm cutting it into tiny pieces. Not necessarily because the base pattern is very complex complex or confusing. So I have my side front peplum, my side front. Those are going to be sewn together at the waist. I'm just going to walk that seam to make sure everything is okay and not out of whack because I was getting confused. And this needs to be half inch longer. See? Just on the end though that connects. So just remember to walk your seams. Uh, it's not, a, it's a good practice to have while doing pattern drafting. Uh, and tape things closed and then walk along like the princess seam to see if everything's going to line up when you go to start sewing it. Because if you're not going to make a mock-up, you don't want to find that out the hard way. 
But again, I'm going to trace the top of my A-line skirt back pattern. Do the same sort of thing for the back here. Uh, I'm sorry that this pattern drafting is so confusing today. I didn't realize, you know, I film these things and then I come back in here to see them. And it's like, who knows what I was up to on... Sometimes it's, it's possible to film things. The more I know what I'm doing when I go into a pattern draft, the easier it is for me to draft it in a way where like I'm keeping in mind people are watching and do it in an order of operations that will make sense for others watching. Whereas sometimes when I'm just flying by the seat of my pantaloons here uh, and just doing things in a more creative and free flowing fashion, it doesn't mean I'm doing it in the exact order or way that would make the most sense for a viewer, which is unfortunate. Um, but I didn't, you know, I used to sew things without anyone watching, but now, now every time I make anything, usually it's for camera. Um, but I'm still learning how to best, mm, I don't know, find the medium between these two things, uh, between just creatively going for it and then also being able to explain it later, which is not as easy, especially here at the end of the year when we all know I need a nap, which is very true. But again, I'm just using my A-line skirt pattern as a base to start making the skirt portion of my jacket. Again, I'm going to tape the center back piece at the waist to the back peplum piece because I can eliminate the waist seam there. Um, I can't do it all the way along because as you can see, it's curved. So um, where the pieces are straight, I can layer them closed. And where it's curved, I need that curve as part of fitting the jacket to me. So and I actually did just cut the back seam allowance away a little bit so that uh, this jacket doesn't hang closed at the center back over the bum. I wanted it to open up a little bit and kind of be pointed back there. We all know how I like a little bit of a bat wing sort of a shape, um, even on something far more modern or let's say futuristic as this. So that's going to be my center back piece there. And then this will be the side back peplum piece. This again needs seam allowance somewhere. And I've tried to decide, do I want to stripe on the back of this or not? Because I originally I had one. Then I just decided actually in the end to um, keep this as one piece and then finish the bottom edge with bias. So you'll see that later. Um, as instead of like having a separate stripe piece, I just use the bias to create the stripe along the bottom, which we'll see. Again, I'm walking my seam just to make sure everything is long enough and the correct length and such. And uh, these are the main pieces of my back, like so. This is going to be black, this is going to be black, this is going to be gray <laughs> twill, and then some of it's going to be silver Tyvek. Lots of nonsense going on here. I'll show you how I keep it all straight, because I do lay it all out once it's cut out. But this is my sleeve pattern. This is my standard sleeve, just with the sides straightened off and then a seam added down the center. Um, I used this to make that navy blue jacket recently, so that's why I already have a copy of this with those modifications inherently in them. Again, my standard sleeve, I can link in the description below how I draft my standard sleeves from the instructions in Pattern Making for Fashion Design by Helen Joseph Armstrong, the book I was taught with when I was in fashion school and therefore still reference because I have a copy and the best book is the one you already own in some ways. I'm just going to make the sleeve a little bit longer here. So I've added on another inch and a half or so, but this is already quite long. I think this is already 25 inches long and my arm is only 22 or 22 and a half is like the length of my arm. So most of the time I make my sleeves 22 and a half. I'm making this one longer because I want to have this big cuff on the end. And instead of doing a separate cuff that I sew on, that's just going to be the sleeve folded back or like cuffed back on itself as opposed to a separate cuff piece. So I just made this long enough that I can turn it back and have the large cuff. And then here on the front, I'm going to have the section closest to the body, <laughs> closest to the underarm of this. I'm going to have that be all black twill. And then the section down the center of this is going to be striped. Oh no. Once again, I'm being very confusing. You'll just have to hopefully follow along with what I'm doing as opposed to what I'm saying because words fail me. Literally. I did take a break to make some Christmas cookies with my mom yesterday, which was probably for the best because um, I, I need a cookie and to focus on, I don't know, just playing with colored sugar as opposed to trying to do anything of, uh, you know, value or to try and teach at this point. I, I wonder if teachers like before final season must be, you know, running out of steam as well, I assume. But here again, I'm just making sure I'm labeling all the pieces so I know what order they go in, which, you know, because these little stripes in the middle here, they really start to get confusing because it's almost the exact same size and the angles are almost the exact same. So making sure I know which one comes first, which one's towards the top of the sleeve, which one's towards the bottom of the sleeve. It's important. I'm actually layering that sleeve closed again now so that I can separate these buddies like so, which using the sleeve is annoying because it means that I, 
don't have a copy of it in that other pattern still. Mm. Dang it. And I just need to straighten off this sleeve a little bit more because it had become a little bit angled somehow. So I just need to make sure it's straight down here at the cuff because I intend to fold the cuffs back. It's just like uh, watching a nature documentary of myself where I can't explain all of the behaviors, you know? Science isn't sure what I'm up to. And that, that's a fact. But I can separate this front section that will become the black solid stripe of my sleeve. The easiest part to both cut out and sew. Um, I'll put some seam allowance on that so I can sew it back to the rest. And then again, all these stripes of my sleeve, I need to cut and add seam allowance to them. I think they're two and a half inches wide. Yeah, those stripes are two and a half inches wide on the back. And it's just going to alternate between gray and black and tie back over there. The biggest part of that sleeve is uh, going to be the silver tie back, which I backed in twill. Um, but silver tie back, it's kind of weird. You know, it's very chrome like finish. It's extremely mirror like you'll see. Um, but tie back is a non woven material. Um, most of the time, tie back is used. You'll see it for. Um, like as a water barrier in building houses and things and like building work, but it is a very lightweight material used also for mailing envelopes often, but it's not woven. So fabric is over, under, over, under at its most basic, right? Well, Tyvek is like little tiny uh, fibers that are all in a random order. They're not woven together in any sort of a pattern. They're just fused um, because it's a type of plastic. Um, so Tyvek material when sewing, doesn't move the way fabric does it moves more like paper does or even more like leather just like the world's thinnest leather but even leather stretches and Tyvek has zero stretch so it's an interesting material to work with it's not the worst I would say the organza was more difficult to work with than the Tyvek is actually um, although doing the curvy parts of this jacket with the Tyvek on the collar was not the most fun thing ever we'll get to that later but I've organized all my pieces they're all labeled so I can't get confused hopefully and then I've organized them all by what color of material they need to be cut out of. So I'm cutting everything out of the gray cotton twill. And I cut out this little extra back flange, little extra yoke thing out of both the gray twill. And then also I'm going to line it in this neon colored taffeta. This is a neon yellow taffeta from Mood Fabrics. And um, I got the gray and black twills actually at Joann's. These are Joann's twills from ages ago that are in my stash. But uh, this is going to be that extra little yoke that hangs past... The regular yoke in the back you can see this taffeta wants to fray stop it um, but i just sewed the curved seam of this to finish this off because the top edge of this gets uh caught in between the yoke and the rest of the full back so i need to have this piece ready and set aside basically once i flip this over you'll see that it has um, a little bit of that reflector tape ironed onto it and i will go over that later um, i used a little bit on this but i will use it again and talk you through how i did that but you can see those are the two stripes of reflector tape there it looks silver under normal lighting um, sort of like a dull silver, but it reflects white when light hits it. It's um, like a safety sort of thing that I'm using for a more stylistic purpose as opposed to a safety purpose here. Here I'm laying out the back and all the pieces in the order that they will need to be, like kind of laying out the puzzle pieces before I click them together in some ways. So I'm laying out all of the back to make sure I have everything is ready to go. I'm about to construct my yoke, the top yoke, incorrectly there. So that's a shame. I had to recut it out and remake it. Thankfully, it was a small piece because... You know, once again, I need an app. It's it's never been more true, perhaps. But um, I'm going to flatline the Tyvek to a twill underlayer. So again, that I can keep like the same drape as the rest of the jacket because the rest of the jacket is made in twill. Um, I just want to back this very, very thin papery material with something that gives it the kind of stability that the rest of the jacket has. Um, you could not like do color blocking the, like this between a medium weight cotton twill and then Tyvek without backing it in some way. Um, you probably could use iron on in facing onto Tyvek, but I haven't tried it. You can iron it. I don't know up to what temperature because I'm not an expert in this material. I just have been playing with it a little bit this year, but you can sew through it very easily and it doesn't um, stick to the iron or anything. It doesn't seem to melt at like even cottony temperatures. So that's good. I think you have to get the iron pretty hot to melt the Tyvek, which is nice. But Tyvek is supposed to be tear resistant, which is why it makes a good fabric. Um, because even though I'm putting a bunch of little tiny holes in it when I'm sewing it over here, it um, doesn't tear along that seam or anything because it's still a pretty strong material. But here I am pressing open. I sew together all like the stripes of the center back pieces. And then I sew the center back to the side back, if that makes sense. So each like large zone needs to be pieced together before I can put the larger like fit 
puzzle pieces together. Ooh, again, hard to explain. I did go ahead and stitch all of this and then top stitch all of it. Between the black on black pieces, I used black thread, but everywhere else I used contrast, um, like goldenrod colored thread, sort of like the color of um, contrast stitching often used on denim. So like a golden color here. And I just knew I was going to wear this over a gold colored, or like a dark ochre colored top for the lookbook. So I knew that that would coordinate with that. And I thought it would be just yet another kind of quirky detail for this jacket. But yes, you can see I have the side backs and the side back peplums sewn together here before I do the princess seam between those and the side backs and these center back pieces. And then I will sew the center back itself, lining up my chevron down the center of this. Again, just as I stitch these, they're all like half inch seam allowance as usual for me. Um, but as I stitch these, I press them open and then do top stitching on them just to keep everything consistent as I go. Um, and then between this yoke and the main body of the back here, I sewed in um, sandwiched between those, I sewed in that extra little yoke flangey thingy, this buddy, which I don't have a name for. I've never used anything like that before, but it just was an extra layer that I thought lended a more uh, kind of tactical look to this jacket, something a little more athletic looking. This whole jacket is a lot more athletic or tactical looking than anything I've ever made before. Um, tons of top stitching on this, but I, uh, you know, just wanted to lean in to that sort of cyberpunk tactical sort of vibe. I don't know what this is tactical for. Um, you know, cruising in the mean streets or whatever. And I did some um, different top stitching where I just, instead of going over seam lines, whenever I get to a corner, I turn. Um, so I always just leave the needle down, pick the presser foot up, turn the project whichever way I need to, put the presser foot back down and keep going. This is how I sew around corners, but it's also how I do top stitching around corners. And I do increase the size of my stitch length when doing top stitching. So this is at like an eight, I think it is. Um, one of the larger stitch length for the top stitching. And I'm actually using thick top stitching thread here, but it was started giving me tension problems. So I switched over to a same color, but regular Coates and Clark thread. Then I do have a bunch of these labels, both with my B logo and then also my like text logo, I suppose. Um, and these are from Dutch label shop. I can link them below. They did send these to me, but it was not uh, sponsored in any way. I think I had, I had a code for them for a while there, but it wasn't an affiliate code or anything. It's the only time I've ever worked with a company. Um, but that's just because they just wanted me to mention them, which I did. And here I am mentioning them again um, because I still using my labels. So I got paid in labels for that and they are quite fun and they're kind of reversible. So I decided I would throw some of them on here again as a sort of streetwear or kind of logo branding uh, aspect to this whole design. And then this stuff here, I'm starting to sew my sleeves together, all the ribbons and color blocking of that. I'm starting to sew them together and then I wanted to put on some of this reflector tape. So this stuff is basically like um, a thin vinyl material with a bit of glue on it that is then stuck to a plastic tape. You cut it to size, put it where you want it. I put a press cloth in between the plastic and my iron just in case I you know, started melting this plastic. I didn't want it to get on my iron. Um, it was hard for me to get it hot enough just with my home iron. Usually something like this, you could use a heat press with it. Um, so I had to do this several times. I pressed it from the top like this. I pressed it from the underside. Um, and then once I did get the plastic to come off, I, it was still not fully stuck down. So I put the muslin back down over this material and then pressed it one final time. And that stuck a lot better. The plastic on this ribbon, in my opinion, is a little bit thick for this. Um, as someone who's done a lot of heat pressing, because actually I had a job where I worked at a t-shirt shop that did uh, like heat pressed designs and decals and stuff like that onto t-shirts. Um, I've used a heat press before, which actually applies pressure and heat. Um, whereas here, I mean, I can only press the iron down myself. So very hard. Um, so it works better once you remove the plastic off, but it's just like a, you know, iron on tape kind of stuff. I wish this stuff came in other colors. I think it, I can only find it in silver reflective, but I wish like these design sort of ribbons like this came in other colors. I'm really tempted to get myself, uh, like one of those circuit or Cricut machines where it like has a, it's not a laser cutter. It's a little tiny blade cutter that you can cut out different shapes of vinyl of many different materials um, to iron on and you can create really cool effects on fabric with that stuff. I used to do like glue and foil. There's oil slick, there's carbon fiber, there's metallics, there's all kinds of really cool things you can do. And I mean, it, I did it for work <laughs> for two years almost that I worked at that business. Um, so it is a little bit um, flashbacky for me working with vinyl <laughs> or iron on things. But at the same time, I never really got to experiment with some of the ideas I did come up with while I was working with those materials. So yeah, but those machines are several hundred dollars. So I don't know if I want to invest in one. I just think I could do some really cool stuff. We'll see. But again, I am just 
seaming all my pieces together here. You can see there's a large piece of silver tie back involved in this one, but again, it's backed in twill. Um, but I can sew all my angled seams of my sleeve together. It's just the sleeve pattern cut into whatever shapes I wanted. The more geometric the shapes, the straighter the lines, the easier it is to sew it back together. You could do circles, you could do curvy lines if you wanted to, it's just going to be annoying to sew it. And at some point, the smaller and curvier your shapes are, the more easy it would be to just do it in applique. And when I say easy, you'll notice that I never do applique because I find it very infuriating. So I'd rather do color blocking like this than applique anything ever. I find applique really annoying. So <laughs> iron on, sure. Color blocking, sure. Little fiddly bits, no. But I'm just seaming all this together again, pressing all my seams open. I did all the top stitching at once on this for some reason. So I stitched everything and then top stitched everything. But same kind of idea, bring everything back over to the machine, top stitch it. I can top stitch right over the Tyvek too, which is nice. I can tell I've switched over to the lighter weight of thread. I was using that top stitching thread again for the back, um, which is nice thicker thread, but my machine didn't like having, like I would have had to reset all the tensions and all the nonsense for it. So I was like, never mind. Switch back to just normal thread and the color contrast will be enough for me. I'm just going to top stitch all of my stripes on my sleeve here before I sew the underarm seam. Um, once the underarm seam is sewn shut, I can't top stitch it. So that's the last seam I will sew for my sleeves because that's the one that will be like under my arm and luckily will not be seen as much because it will not be top stitched like the rest are. But I really was kind of just diving into the weirdest design I had come up with this year to do this jacket. So I, I actually sketched two different jackets that I wanted to make for this lookbook and I wanted to have time to do both, but I only had time to make one of them. And the other was like more... Uh, solid color and more traditionally, I don't know, like f mm, chic in some ways. And then this one was a little bit more tech wear inspired, a little stranger, a little more streetwear looking. And I decided to go with this one. I was more excited about this design for whatever reason. So I'm really glad I did because I, again, I really like that jacket. I think it kind of is one of the, I think it's the standout piece in that lookbook, honestly, this and the navy coat probably. Um, the navy coat video is over on my Patreon at this point, if you want to see it, by the way. Although that collar will be coming to the channel in the new year. Um, so if you just want that collar design and don't need to see that particular coat, it will be coming to the channel um, next month. So don't sign up just for that collar because I will be bringing it to you next month here on the channel as well. I'm going to make another one of those standing collar and hooded vest sort of things from uh, like the iridescent one that I made. For that lookbook, I'll make another one here. Again, using some of these same materials I used to make this jacket, actually, because I have some leftover twill, so I'll use that. But here I have some folded sections of Tyvek. This is, again, Tyvek just instead of the silver. It is a shiny black glossy Tyvek. Both these Tyveks are from moodfabrics.com. It also comes in light blue and pink. I think it probably used to come in gold. I wish it still did, because I wish I could get some. But uh, this is the only, like, fashion Tyvek I've ever seen. I don't know if anyone else sells it. But if anyone else has, like, a full color range of this, probably Tyvek themselves do sell the material, but on a wholesale kind of way, not in, you know, retail smaller lengths like I would need. And if you order this from Mood, they will send it to you on a cardboard roll, by the way, as opposed to folded. Um, it does crease a little, but you can also kind of iron it a little. It has a almost like weathered or leather sort of texture up close, but it is also still very glossy and very metallic. And I'm just layering these folded sections of, these are two inches wide, um, I'm just like folding the ends shut. I'm not even sewing them shut. I'm just folding them because the other end of it will be caught within the seam. And so where I'm sewing the stripes of the yoke together on the gray side, I'm sewing that with this in between almost like a piping, almost like how you would do piping. So before I stitch this seam, I'm just sliding those pieces of tie back in there. So they serve as little stripes on my jacket. Again, not for any reason other than that I thought it might look cool, you know, that's it's kind of the entire uh, idea of this jacket is like, why? Because I thought it might look cool, you know? I don't know. And I'll top stitch those down from the outside. So they're kind of securely held in place from that as well. But it's just a decorative thing. Slide these pieces of Tyvek in here between the seams. If I could make Tyvek piping without wanting to cry, maybe I would have done that. But I just made these little sections and sewed them in there. And I did do a little bit of geometric top stitching on this top part of the yoke as well. So I just did an extra stripe there. And then you'll see how I make my little rectangles. I just go along and then wherever I decide to put one of these little spots, uh, using my presser foot as a guide, and then turn, go up four stitches, sew about an inch, go back down those four stitches. Um, it's four stitches. I was using 10 stitches per inch for this, but I was just counting my stitches so that I could keep it the same, I guess, or consistent. Four stitches was about a quarter inch. So I can go around here and just create these little random blocks in my top stitching. Just a little geometric sort of art deco inspired 
geometric shapes that I'm just drawing on here, kind of free drawing with the needle um, to kind of quilt this pattern up into the top of the yoke. And then I have another one of these Tyvek stripes to add in. So I was trying to decide exactly where and like how I wanted to do that. Again, this is not, you know, it's not like I'm following a pattern. I'm just following what my heart <clears throat> tells me in the moment, you know? So um, it's hard to tell you how to replicate something because it's like, I don't even know what the heck I'm doing half the time. But of course the jacket is inspired by, you know, some of the style in cyberpunk, but more so even um, various Thierry Mugler shows from over the years. Um, some of the more futuristic inspired um, shows that Alexander McQueen did for uh, Givenchy in the late 90s. There's some really amazing shows. And then also things like Star Wars costuming, you know, all of that is coming into play here and guiding my decision making while I'm trying to make this rather strange piece. <laughs> Here is my yoke for the gray side of the jacket. The other side of the jacket yoke is black and it's just the pieces sewn together with top stitching and no Tyvek. So it's a little simpler, the black side. But I will just go ahead now and assemble the rest of the gray side of the jacket here. One side of the front is gray, one side is black. Um, I, I like a bi-colored garment like that. It's quite fun. I have a couple of things in my closet like that now and I have a couple others planned. I'm gonna just sew that seam together between the side front and the side front peplum, side front peplum, I suppose. And then I will line up my princess seam. You can see I have yellow notches here along the princess seam so that this is lined up properly. I will actually put little clips in the straight side of the princess seam too so it fits around the bust before I even sew it. You can clip, well, you have to clip the curves afterwards for sure, but you can put little like pre-clips that are about a quarter of an inch clip as opposed to the full half inch in beforehand to help you fit pieces together like this. So that's what I'm doing here. And after I sew this princess seam, I will fully clip it, press it open and top stitch it because the rest of this is, of course, top stitched uh, a ton. So, you know, might as well top stitch this seam as well to hold it down nice and smooth. And it's a little bit annoying to do a like thicker, stiffer fabric like this over a princess seam, um, like stiffer fabric like this twill. Uh, denim is a cotton twill, by the way, same sort of weave. Um, so it's like, got a small directional like diagonal line to it if you look up close to the fabric but it's the same kind of, this is like a lightweight denim in some ways, just with no stretch in it. I'm just pressing, so I clipped over the bust and the curves there, and I'm just pressing this seam open before I top stitch that. Like so, over here on the machine, again, still using that goldenrod colored thread that I was using as an accent for this, even though there's also another color of yellow used in this. So it's black, gray, and then also metallic silver and glossy black, and then also goldenrod top stitching and labels in the back, and then the neon yellow, like phosphorescent yellow lining for this jacket as well. So yeah, lots going on. And then this reflector tape, which is both silver and white and weird. Once again, I was just lining up that up where I wanted it. I was slipping a piece of muslin underneath the end of it too, so I could um, just make sure it didn't stick to my ironing board at all. And then using a piece of muslin again as a press cloth as well on top of all that to press hard and <laughs> get that iron nice and hot on there and then you're supposed to let it cool completely before you try and peel the plastic off um, but i'm impatient <laughs> so that's the hardest part for me is waiting for to see if it's stuck or not because if it didn't stick i need to go again you can see this half half stuck and then part of it didn't stick down so i'm putting the muslin back down over it gently and then I'll give it a final good press. And without the plastic on, it sticks a lot better. So again, I think they should make that plastic a little bit thinner, but that's just me. At least for home use like this. I can understand in an industrial environment, they have irons and heat presses and things that are a lot more equipped to do something like that. But now with my reflector tape on this side, I can go ahead and sew the yoke to the main body of the garment. Again, we saw in the beginning of the pattern drafting how this is, fronts are basically three pieces. It's the uh, like center front section, the yoke and then the side front. So those three main pieces are now sewn together as I put this yoke onto the rest of it. There's a little bit of a curve near the arm of that. So I'm just going to clip that curve and again, press this flat and again, top stitch it. That's right. You guessed correctly. And obviously if I were to make like a full solid version of this, I wouldn't cut it into this many little tiny pieces, um, especially this yoke or something like that. I do have a fabric in my stash that I wouldn't mind making this jacket out of, but without all the piecing and without all the color blocking, because I just wanted to make it one solid situation, but we'll see. And I couldn't decide if I wanted more of this reflector tape, kind of like stickers around, but I decided against it. 
So the other side here, the top of the yoke is gray, but the rest of it is black. And then you can see I did my geometric top stitching in that same goldenrod color, which stands out more against the black naturally. Um, so this is the other front here. I constructed that off camera, as it were. And then here I have my backs and I can line those up with the fronts at the side seam. So easy enough here to making sure that little extra back flangey yokey thing is included in here. But I'll just sew together the side seams of this and the shoulder seams of this half inch seam allowance as usual. I have the machine loaded with that gold colored thread, so I just use that for this. Whatever. Technically, I should switch out for black thread, but I was switching my thread so often with this. That anywhere I could get away with not having to switch it, I just did. Because I was like, listen, <laughs> this is taking forever. Um, things like this would be much easier to make if I wasn't color blocking the crap out of them as well. Which, you know. And speaking of not color blocking things, of course I didn't use all this piecing for when I cut out the lining. Because that would be silly. So I'm taping these pieces back together along the stitching line. Um, even this like full sleeve here, I'm taping everything back together so that I can cut the lining out uh, without having all this extra seaming to do. So just taping everything back together and then I can cut out my lining. And so again, I only have the three main pieces for the front of this, the side fronts, the center front pieces in the yoke, and of course the side uh, peplum. So I guess it's four total. At its most simple, this pattern would be far fewer pieces if you were not color blocking it. And thus begins also our um, problem of the neon fabric doing strange things to the camera <laughs> because the camera doesn't know what to do with this neon fabric. It's too bright for the like the sensor in the camera. So the lighting gets a bit out of whack in some of these shots because the camera is freaking out about the neon yellow. And uh, fair enough, because this fabric is exceedingly bright. I love this neon taffeta from Mood. I'll link it below, even though I don't want you to buy out the stock of it because I want more of it. I don't even know what I want to use it for. I just love it. I think it's so great for accents or lining things. It's very, very bright. This is the highlighter yellow taffeta of all highlighter yellow taffetas. And it's quite easy to work with. It's very crispy. I like it. I'll just construct my lining in much the same way that I made the outside, just in far fewer pieces. So it will take me less time, which is nice. Um, but you can say I didn't surge any of this or anything because this whole jacket will be fully lined. So I'm not worried about that. The only pieces I surged for this were the bits that I needed to um, flatline the tie back for. So that's the only time I used the serger on this particular project. Here I'm cutting out the most of the sleeve lining here in a black rayon lining that I had laying around. I will do the last six inches or so of the sleeve in the twill so that it, when it folds back again to be an outer cuff it has the twill showing. I wanted a silky smooth lining for the rest of the sleeve though because I'm going to be you know wearing it over stuff and uh, to have a little twill lining inside the sleeve would be annoying for the full sleeve and I didn't have enough of the neon taffeta to do the top of the sleeve in the taffeta so I just grabbed some black lining that I had laying around. This is actually a cupo, cupro, uh, it's a type of rayon like a recycled cotton rayon I think. Um, manufactured fiber that's made out of recycled bits of cellulose, I think. I don't know. Um, that I picked up on Mood, which is a very nice lining, and they're sadly now out of it, which is a bummer because it was only like $6 a yard for a nice twill lining, which is always nice. But I sewed those cuffs onto my sleeves. Basically, the sleeve lining just has a separate fabric for the end of it. Like, if you wanted to do like faux fur fold back cuffs or something like that, you would just use you know, a little bit at the end, unless you wanted the full sleeve to be lined in full faux fur, which would be very cozy, but you would want to incorporate a lot of ease, you know, if you were to do that. But here I'm finally drafting the collar for this. Um, so I'm measuring the back neckline, which is 3.5. So I'm doing that, then this is gonna be the shoulder. And then I measured the front neckline to where it normally would be, which is about five inches. Um, it's about four and a half really. And then I will tip this up half inch where the front neckline would normally end. And then from there is where I will extend the rest to like go along the asymmetric front of this. I'm gonna make this one inch tall and then I'm gonna change my mind and make it one and a quarter. <laughs> so that's what's happening there. And I'm trying to decide how to do this. Uh, I haven't done this before. So again, I, I, it's hard to explain something because it's not like I'm a master of it. I just am trying it and if it works, it makes it seem like I know what I'm doing, but really I don't always know what I'm doing. Sometimes I just try stuff and sometimes, and usually, I guess every once in a while it doesn't work, but these days, luckily I only try things that I'm pretty confident are going to work, work out, but that doesn't, still doesn't mean I'm an expert in explaining them, sadly. But this, the rest of the collar kind of just tips up to finish off the front of the neckline, which you'll see. Um, if it, is it really a neckline? It's like a fold back collar at this point, but this will go along here. I can walk that at least to the center front. Kid, thank you. Like so, walk that along. And so the rest of this, that ends right there is where the yoke ends. And then 
This goes on to here. How much further do I need? I'm just trying to make sure this is the right length. Right there. Okay. So I'm just walking that seam to figure out what I need and to see if it's going to work. So again, walk your seams. I guess that that is my one tip for this video that I can actually articulate. Try walking your seams before you cut everything out. It's not a bad idea. Here I'm doing it again. Like so. And that'll fold up and become the collar for this buddy. And the outside of this is going to be Tyvek and the inside is going to be neon. So the inside will blend in with the lining and the outside will be the contrasting Tyvek. Because I'm using Tyvek to bind the edges of this jacket, like the front edge as well, I'm going to cut a pattern piece for it because it doesn't stretch like bias would. Like normally I would just cut bias tape and like that's what I'm going to do for the hem of this jacket. But uh, because things stretch a little bit on the bias and are very useful for finishing edges. If you've ever seen me do costuming work, you know that I use bias to do that, uh, finish the edges on that for a lot of it. But Tyvek doesn't move like a fabric, so I just need to cut it out flat. So I'm just going to trace a basically a trim edge for this front of this jacket to um, be able to do the Tyvek on the outside. Ooh. Truly, I really wish I could get Tyvek in a brown or a bronzy color because I want to make one of these in brown, but I don't have a good contrasty, like, gloss something for it. I might have to get, like, brown vinyl or, like, if I can find a faux leather or something, maybe? There's a lot of very, very, very cool real leathers that I've seen on Etsy. And I don't really mind using real leather because I wear real leather shoes and I still eat meat. So I'm not, you know, I, I can't be precious about one thing and not about the other, honestly. But I do try to eat as vegetarian as I can. Uh, I, when I move out of here, I will eat vegetarian at home, at least for sure. But um, while I live with my family, they are not, they are not on the same wavelength as going mostly vegetarian as I am. I don't even mind going vegan when possible. I have, a good friend of mine is vegan and anytime I'm out with her, we always try new vegan restaurants and fun yummy things. There's actually quite a few places in Denver that are quite good, honestly. There's actually a new vegan Indian restaurant that just opened up in my neighborhood, so I'm really excited to try that because I love Indian food and I like vegan food, so together I'm hyped about it. But yes, just making my front edge binding, it's a, it's a rectangle, I just need to make it the right size rectangle, and then my uh, collar piece, which I will cut here out of the tie back. And like I said, this stuff is very mirror-like, as you can see. The back of it is white, which is nice because as a backing for the the um, neon is quite sheer. So um, the, having the white backing on this shine through makes it very um, blindingly neon, which is great. This is cut on the fold. So that's my collar piece. I need to cut one of those out of this neon as well. But I will see the outside edge of this collar <clears throat> together and then clip my curves, turn it right side out, all that jazz here. So that's what I'm doing. Making Now, the you just see me readjust my pins here. That's because the neon is actual fabric and so it has a little bit of stretch to it like it'll move because it's woven whereas the Tyvek has zero stretch so I have to make sure the fabric fits into the Tyvek because the Tyvek ain't going anywhere and you can see I do have this pinned within the seam allowance so that I um, don't have to put holes in the Tyvek that won't recover because you know you put a pin into fabric and it's just pushing the threads aside it's not punching a hole but when you put a pin into Tyvek or leather or vinyl you are punching a hole in the fabric so or into the material so because it's not a fabric. Once again, lovely. As if there weren't enough confusing things going on in this video. Me talking about non-woven materials. It's not helping. So here's my center back of my collar. I need to do the pieces that go along the either front the same way. So just sewing the outside edge of that. And then I'm going to top stitch the outside edge of that before I even put it onto the jacket as well. Just because I thought that might be easier. I'm just top stitching this. It's not too sticky, this Tyvek. It's a uh, very papery is the descriptor I would use. It doesn't feel like aluminum foil, but that is what it looks like. So I sewed that Tyvek side to the outside edge of the jacket. And then I'm going to um, place my lining for the jacket in here so that I can kind of sandwich it in between. Oh no, this is another one of those zones where I have no way to explain this. So I didn't want to have to sew my lining in separate from this. So I have my lining lined up where it needs to be along the front edge opening of this jacket. Problem we have here, pals, is like me, you know, like if you were, I don't know, explaining how to make, this is like a, a, a moment where we need an analogy, I think, which is that like sometimes as a creative baker, let's say, or cook, you will just throw things in because it sounds good to you in the moment. Like you're cooking 
and you're in the creative flow of cooking something and you're like, oh my gosh, what if I add this thyme to this? Oh my gosh, do I have some fresh thyme? That's going to be amazing. And you just throw it in there. This is the creative uh, cooking of sewing. So I'm thinking, oh, what if I put the lining in as I do this front edge binding? Oh, okay, yeah, that'll be easier. So I'm kind of flat lining this. Instead of bag lining it, I'm flat lining it because all edges are going to be uh, bound in some way. So these front two edges, the left and right edges, are bound with this Tyvek and nylon weirdness, um, which had a tiny little snip in it. And I was like, is this going to be okay? It's going to be okay. Um, so I'm just deciding to sandwich the lining in on the fly as I do that. And I don't have a good explanation now why. So sometimes you add time to a dish and usually it's fine. Um, just don't add too much. You know? But once I have that sewn to the edge and to the lining, I guess I can fold the inside of the binding in like so and pin it to the, the <clears throat> lining. And then I will top stitch it down from the outside, which will catch this edge. Dang it. As usual. Um, I think we're just out of juice, guys. I think I'm just, um, extra out of juice. I always fear I'm being confusing, but I do fear today that I just didn't have a chance. <laughs> and, uh, you know, next week is Christmas, and I told myself I would take December off, so really, I, I, um, I'm not doing well on the, the goals for December here. So I just need to get things done so that I can hibernate a tiny bit and come back to you refreshed, renewed, and ready to actually explain things properly. So my front edges are done. They're encased in that Tyvek. It looks like some sort of microwave meal for people on the space station. Great. Now we need to do the curve of the collar. And I need to sew the Tyvek to the curved edge of the neckline. Which, again, the Tyvek doesn't stretch at all. So this is the worst part of this project for me. What you're not seeing here is me growling and being sad. Um, it, it comes together fine. There are a couple of tiny puckers in this, but like the whole Tyvek area looks like Kringle foil anyway, so it's not like you can notice the difference. Um, but, you know, this is much easier to do in fabric than it is to do in Tyvek, I'll tell you that. And it would be much easier to do in metallic leather if I had access to that. Or even vinyl, because at least it's stretchy. Whereas the Tyvek has just zero stretch or movement at all. It's like sewing copy paper that doesn't rip. Yeah. Imagine if you've ever had like a Tyvek mailer envelope. It's the same texture, just with a shiny finish. But the order of operations for sewing this collar on is technically the same as I would use for any other stand collar. Just, um, the fabric is weird, if you can call it fabric. But that is part of the reason that I haven't shown you how to make the hood or the standing, the big standing collar that I did for a couple of things on this project yet. Um, just because I want to figure out the best way to explain these things as opposed to just, like, I, I know how to make them now, myself, but how do I teach other people to do it is uh, something that I need to think about more and more, obviously. So I am taking a little bit of extra time on those couple of projects so that I can bring them to you next month, hopefully with a little bit more clarity um, and in a way that makes, explain them in a way that makes more sense and is translatable for other people as opposed to just me. So it's part of the reason I'm taking a little bit of extra time with the hood pattern and then the big fold back standing collar stuff. Um, if you want to see the big fold back collar that I did on the navy blue coat with the blue lining and then the um, like petrol oil slick and black dress um, that is going to be over on patreon so if you want to see it can't can't wait that's where it will be um, but I'm kind of testing out how to explain it over there and then once I actually figure out a way to teach that it will end up here on the channel so again those will be out next month so you won't have to wait long but I'm just going to give myself a little bit of extra time on those but here I am top stitching the outside of the Tyvek to hold down the neon on the inside. Again, I don't need to, like normally I would hand stitch that, the inside of the collar, but because I'm top stitching everywhere else on this, figure I'll just top stitch it. Luckily, the Tyvek has no problem with being top stitched, which is nice. And then to cover over the seam of where I did the binding on the inside, because I didn't plan my lining very well, honestly, um, I'm going to use more of this reflector tape, which is kind of fun in here anyway. So that's what I did here didn't stick all the way, so I had to iron it again. Stick down! It really helps to do the final press with the plastic off, so if at all possible. Again, I wish I could find this exact same stuff, but in like black shiny or in gold, but alas. And they don't make it for creative applications, they make it for safety applications. 
Hence why I need that circuit cutter cricket thing. But it's a lot of money to spend. But this is my job. And we want to see me do fun things, right? Um, it's hard to decide. Maybe after I move. We know I'm supposed to be saving money to move. This is part, also part of the thing, you know? But th the final step for the main body of this buddy is to hem the bottom of the jacket, which I'm doing with some bias binding in a lovely, you know, black twill bias binding, which is so much easier than the other materials we were just using. And it behaves like a fabric. What an idea. But over the curves, I'll put a clip and I'll turn the binding to the inside. Mmm, yummy. So much easier than the rest. And again, I can top stitch from the outside to hold this down, which looks like this in the end. So I'm going to do the other side the same way. There we go. Use fabric as opposed to building materials. So much easier. And at this point, I'm actually using neon yellow top stitching thread just for a little bit of difference. And again, I'm trying to like line things up and be geometric about it. And then I ran out of my neon thread, which was sad because I, because I ordered this neon thread online. I can't uh, get it at Joann's or anywhere. It only seems that they have it on... Amazon, but I haven't even seen it on a mood because I had to get like a set of neon Guterman. It's gotta be somewhere else I can order it from, but not in a pinch, you know? But yes, in general, I'm like not a, you know, I never uh, have thought of myself as a teacher, um, but now a great many people watch what I do and I would hope to impart as much of what I know uh, to other people as possible, but I have to kind of learn, what is it called? Pedagogy, <laughs> you know, learn to teach, learn how to do things in a way that is easily explainable, um, easily understood. So thank you for bearing with me as I am on this journey because I have to learn how to teach better, but, um, it means kind of thinking about it at all steps of the process. So instead of winging it, being able to think through how I will explain something while I'm doing it, uh, it adds an extra layer for sure, and it makes things take more time. Um, I could make more things if I wasn't thinking about how the heck I'm going to teach how to do it. But I enjoy teaching other people how to replicate what I do, I suppose. I hope other people can replicate what I do in general. And I just was lining my sleeves there. And then now I'm going to set my sleeves in, which is going to be the last step of this. I'm setting this into just the twill layer. You can see the lining is like pushed out of the way, the yellow lining. It's like yellowy green here. Kind of looks yellow or green, depending on the lighting. But it's highlighter yellow, basically, is what's going on here. So the sleeve is already lined and, like, turned up from the cuff so that the sleeve is entirely lined. I haven't um, done any sort of basting along the top edge of the sleeve cap. I could have to hold those two layers together. I just pinned both layers, the outer and the lining, layers of the sleeve into the arm side together. And I'm sewing them into the 12 layer of the jacket as one. And then I will show you how I finish this off, which is going to be the last like step of this, is finishing off the arm side of the lining to encompass all of this so that none of the raw edges show on the inside. Once that sleeve is in, I have all this seam allowance goop up here. I'm going to clip my curves so that they will behave. Then I'm going to turn them like inside up into the where the lining is, and I will like hem the edge of the lining and curl that edge over all the seam allowance so that it's lining butting up against the lining, you know? Um, the yellow lining is now like sealing, like pressed up to the edge of the black lining and I can actually just fell in between those two. Um, you could slip stitch it, but I, fa I fell faster than I slip stitch. <laughs> so I'm just gonna fell it in here because it's my jacket. And if anyone wants to judge my arm size when I have my jacket off, we're gonna have words about several things, you know? Other than me felling instead of slip stitching. A girl's got to do what a girl's got to do when she's also building a set and trying to make other stuff and make dinner, you know? There's a lot going on. So clipping the curves where I need to, stuffing all the seam allowance inside between the lining layers, and then turning the edge of the yellow lining so that it's smooth along the black lining, and then I'll fell in between all of that. I'll even show you how I fell it, which I don't normally show my hand stitching, but I'm just picking up a tiny bit of the black, a tiny bit of the yellow. None of these stitches show on the outside. I'm just stitching the linings together. So I'm just stitching the black and the yellow linings together. Not that the shot is in focus, but hopefully you can get an idea. And again, I'll just take this moment to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> and also thank you. Um, thank you for supporting the channel this year and supporting me and my work and 
you know, not, this isn't a finished product. The jacket is, but I am not a finished product and the channel is not a finished product. I'm constantly, hopefully getting better um, and learning and hopefully one day I'll be able to impart things in a way that makes sense, but we're just not there yet. So thank you for bearing with me and supporting me this year as I'm about to hit 100,000 subscribers, possibly, as my Christmas present from YouTube. And thank you all for that. And here is my finished cyberpunk jacket again being worn. I know this is a bit of a strange project for me, but I'm always just constantly stuck between the two styles I like most, which is like, uh, I don't know, owner of a space casino who like moonlights as a like mercenary, and then also a like decadent Victorian Gothic vampire. And I think like, I always just want to be on a sliding scale between these two things. So sometimes I have to go full like tech wear inspired cyberpunk. And sometimes I go back to my Victorian Gothic roots and I can't help but swing between these two slight extremes on the style spectrum. But what they always have in common is the color black, so I have that as a nice grounding zone. But I hope you enjoyed seeing this project come together today, and thank you as always for watching. I'll be back here with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon, so we'll see you then.